There is a lot of cool stuff that Quasar's button drop down component can do. So I'm going to dive right into it. Let's say Q button dash drop down to use this component. And anything inside of here is going to show within the drop down when we click on the button. So let's set a label here. This is just like a normal Quasar button. So we'll set a label to more information. And then we'll put a Q dash card in there, a Q dash card dash section inside of there, and then throw in some lorem ipsum. Save it. There's our button. And when we click on it, that card comes up. How cool is that? Super simple to use, but a really cool result there using Quasar's components. Another example of this would be using a list. So let's say Q dash list, and then we'll have inside of there Q dash item, and then a Q dash item dash section. And then maybe this is a list that sits in the top right menu over here. So you might have, for example, log out, and then I'll copy paste that down a couple of times. And then maybe there's another one that says change password. And then the last one could be account details. Save it. And instead of more information, this would be, for example, an icon equal to person. And there we go. And then maybe we could also make it rounded. Save it. And there we go. You can imagine that would look good in sort of a top right menu over here. And then when we click on it, we've got these different options available. All right, I might change the color just to jazz things up a little bit. And what else can we do? Well, if we want this menu to close when we click on one of the list items, we can use Quasar's v-close-popup directive. I'll show you what I mean. Let's come in here to Q item, control D, control D, so that we select all occurrences. And then I'll come in here and say v-close-popup, save it. And now when I click on one of those items, it's going to close the pop-up for me. And if I go control D, 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 D again, and then come in here and say clickable, we're going to get an arrow that basically shows that these items are clickable. There we go. What else can we do? Well, we can actually get rid of v-close-popup. So let's get rid of it in all these situations and add in here auto-close. This is basically a way of saying Hey, if I click on anything inside of this drop down, I want you to close the menu. So it's just a faster way of getting that effect. But be careful using auto close because if you have sub menus, then that can give you some undesirable effects. So if you try to have like a sub menu within your item list, you click on that sub menu, it's going to close without showing the extra content. So you got to be careful with auto close. What else can we do? Well, we can say here persistent, and I might actually keep auto close in there. And if you say persistent, it means that if I try and click around here, it will not close. It's basically saying, make sure the user actually performs an action, like clicking on one of those items before closing the menu. But if we don't use persistent, and then I open the menu and click over here, then it's going to close. So that's good to know. What else can we do? We can also set the content style and the content class. So a good example of that would be content dash style, setting the font size. So let's set it to 1.4 EM, save it. And now when we open this menu, everything's going to be a little bit bigger. So content style is basically saying everything inside of here is going to have that style, everything inside of the menu. So if you had something like other text in there, that's also going to take on that different font size. All right, so let's get rid of that. We've also got, of course, content class. And a good example of this would be simply changing the color of the menu. Let's set the background equal to secondary, and then we'll set the text equal to white. Now, when I click on there, we've just got a nicer looking menu. So that's pretty cool. Let's bring in auto close again, so that that closes when I click on these buttons. And let's move on to some styling related stuff. So Quasar's button dropdown is going to have all of those styles that you usually get with a Quasar button. So things like setting the color and the icon, of course, which I've already shown you. But then we've also got unelevated. Say that, we get an unelevated button. And I'll just smash through a few of these to show you examples. Flat, rounded. You can check out the button video if you want a little bit more information about this stuff. Oop, I've already got rounded up there. We've also got no caps. So if you've got a label there equal to my label, it's going to work, but then if I get rid of no caps, it's just going to capitalize everything. 
So that's good to know as well. We can also say inside of here, icon is equal to folder. And once again, I've already shown that example. So let's try another icon just to drive it home. And there we go. This could show you like a whole bunch of folders that you've got access to. We can also change the way the menu opens. So if I add here, cover, save it. When I click on this drop down, notice that the menu is now covering the button. If we get rid of cover, it actually doesn't do that by default. It makes sure that it doesn't cover the button. So that could be handy if you want to change the styling there. We can also say menu dash anchor and menu dash self. So let's cover what these mean. The menu anchor is going to be the Q button drop down. Menu self is going to be well, the menu itself, the actual menu that's shown. So that's how I remember this. I always think of menu self. That is the menu itself. And then the anchor is basically the thing that that menu is connecting to. So if you start with menu self, it's usually easy to figure out what the anchor means. All right, so let's do some options in here. If we set that to center left, that means the menu will open from the center left of the button. So right here. And then if I say menu self, is equal to center right. Let's save it and I'll show you that. Notice that the center right of the menu connects to the center left of the anchor. All right, so pause the video and take a look at this and the menu to sort of figure out what that means. Sometimes this kind of confuses me and I need a little, a little bit of time for my brain to sort of grok it. Another thing we can do, for example, is change this to top right. So if we make that top right, then the top right of menu self connects to the center left of menu anchor. So play around with this, check out the docs if you need to, so that you can get that right. And one more thing to point out is it will change the positioning if it runs out of space. So if I make this a little bit smaller and we add some more text to one of these items, save it. Notice that it's basically going to move the menu so that it's visible to the user. I kind of bugged out a little bit there. So you might want to play around to sort of get that right for your use case. Anyway, let's bring that back to logout. And one more thing I'll show you related to the menu is the menu offset. So if we say menu dash offset and set it equal to an array, we can put in here, for example, 15 and 15. That means that it's going to have an X and Y offset of 15. So since this is X axis related, it's going to be 15 offset. And then if we do it Y access related, it'll also be 15 offset. So that wasn't the best example, but you can sort of play around with these values to basically get this menu to show exactly where you want it. Another thing we can do is change this icon here. So let's say drop down icon and set it to arrow underscore circle underscore down. And now we're going to get a different icon there. And when we click on it, it still gets that animation where it sort of turns up and down. So you can play around with that to make it look exactly how you like it. And another thing you can do is actually remove the animation if you don't want that animation. No icon animation. So now when I click on this, it's not going to do that little spinny thing that we got before. So that's good to know if you want a little bit more control over that. We can also slot into the label here. So we can't use the default slot because that's already being used for the menu. So in order to basically tap into this part of the button, this left part of the button, we can say template and then add in here, hashtag label. Now I can say my label and basically take full control over this label here. So I'm gonna remove the icon and let's add an image in there instead. So Q dash avatar, and then we can say Q dash image to use Quasar's image component and set the source equal to https dot slash slash pixum dot photos slash 150 by 150. Save it. And there we go. Now we get an image in there. And you might want to play around with this Q image component, make the spinner a little bit smaller or whatever to make sure that it shows up correctly. But there you go. We have all the flexibility we need with this component. Let's bring back an icon. Icon is equal to person. What else can we do? Well, we can model this. So we can say V dash model is equal to show drop down. And now if I copy that, let's come down here. We've already got a ref. Oh, and it looks like I prepared something earlier. So I like to do examples myself from scratch so that you get to see everything. So let's get rid of that and do it again. 
We'll yank ref out of there. We'll say const show dropdown is equal to a reference that is true by default. Now let's return show dropdown. And there we go. And now this is being modeled. And since that's equal to true by default, if I refresh the page, notice we get that dropdown by default because it's modeling this piece of data that's saying, hey, I want you to be set to true, which basically in this case means opened. True is saying opened when you model this component. And then I can add in top of here a pre tag just to sort of drive this home and say show drop down. And there we go. We can see that it changes depending on the state of the menu. All right, enough of that though. So I'll close that out and I'll get rid of this V model. Now, another thing that you can do, which is really cool with the button drop down, is add in a split. So by doing that, this button is now separate from the drop down. So if I come in here and say at click and then do something, let's come down here and just console.log that. So const do something is a function that's console.logs do something. And what am I doing wrong here? Oh, got to say that that's equal to a function and then we'll expose it to the template. Now check this out. When I click on the drop down, this does not get called. When I click on the button, it does get called. So the cool thing here is that by adding a split, you can have a different action for the drop down and the button. So it gives you that extra layer of flexibility. Really, really cool. What else can we do? Well, now that we've got that split in place, we also have disable drop down. So if I save that, notice that we get this disable effect for the drop down and we can't click on that drop down. But if I open the console here, I'm still able to click the button, but I cannot click the drop down. So if you want to specifically disable that drop down, you have that functionality available to you. Or you can do the opposite, disable main button. So now if I try and click on the main button, we don't get a console.log there, but we can still open up the menu. So that's kind of cool. What else can we do? Well, that's pretty much it. But the last thing I wanna show you is that if you are using this split, so we'll get rid of that disable, and then we have something like two on that button, then we can say slash other dash route. And when you have two there, so when you're using view router to take you to a different route, notice that clicking the menu does not activate two, but clicking the button does. So I just wanted to point that out that when you use two, it kind of gives you that expected behavior where it only applies to the button, but when you've got this split in place, it won't apply to the dropdown itself. So that, my friends, is the Q button dropdown component. Hope you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed making it for you. See you in the next video.